It's history time today because I finally managed to get my hands on a gun I've wanted to try out for quite some time. It is the German military Mauser K98 replica from Diana. And welcome to AAR on Air. Yes, today it's finally the turn of the Mauser K98K. Now, I have, in the dark and distant past, used the Springer version of this, which really needed a squint from 30 paces to give it sufficient credibility for the collectors and Puritans out there because it didn't actually have a bolt action on the underlever version. Today's PCP, however, does have a bolt and a magazine multi-shot action too. But, as always, before we get stuck into the review, it's time for a brief history lesson. So, pencil and paper at the ready, because there may well be a test at the end. To start with, I suppose we should start by giving it its correct and full name, which was the Karabiner 98 Kurz, which roughly translated means Carbine 98 Short, which is still quite a mouthful. Small wonder then it was mostly referred to as the Car 98K or the K 98K. It was initially designed and built by Mauser in 1935 but later built by other companies too. It was adopted on the same year as the standard service rifle by the German Weimarkt and has found itself still being used around the world today, as is often the case with these old weapons. Increasingly though, its magazine only held five rounds and in spite of its carbine name was still pretty long and was up against the shorter semi and fully automatic rifles of the Allies at the time. But the Germans maintained these bolt action rifles due to their tactical doctrine of basing a squad's firepower on the general purpose machine gun. So the role of the rifleman was largely to carry ammunition and provide covering fire for the machine gunners. In close quarters then, these still quite long carbines with low shot count were not particularly efficient. There were, however, around 14 to 15 million produced, and most of those were captured and used by the Russians towards the end of the war. And from there, they found themselves in theatres of war all over the world, right up to present day, indeed. As always, there is so much more around these guns' histories, including variants and adaptations, but I would simply say, take some time to research it because it is, as always, very interesting. So let's take a closer look at this offering from Diana, shall we? Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will straight away notice this is called the Mauser K98, which would normally indicate the Polish variant, but let's not get too bogged down with the fine specifics, because this isn't a direct replica, because certain compromises will naturally need to be made to aid the PCP action and the manufacturing process on practicality and costs. The really good news with this is that it's not only a PCP to keep the shot count up and save on the CO2 capsule costs, but it is pellet. So, no potential ricocheting from BBs to worry about. Of course, this begs the question around power levels then. What is to restrict this from being full power? Well, just to keep you in suspense, I'll come to that later. First of all, the walk around as usual. This is quite a striking looking air gun in its black and wood livery. The wood is actual wood too, not faux wood. And the finishings here on the stocks are really pretty good. It is long at 42.9 inches or 1090 millimeters in 21st century speak that is. 
And according to Diana, tops the scales unscoped at exactly three kilograms or 6.6 .6 pounds. Yes, I said unscoped because this has a dovetail rail on the top for a scope. Ideally, a period looking scope would look amazing. And of course, it keeps the whole replica idea running through. It is 545 millimetres long and is pretty quiet in action because there appears to be some form of suppression in the barrel shroud and at the end. This may please some people with a need to keep the noise down to placate the neighbours, but others would much prefer to hear a loud bark, maybe. Personally, I think it's a sensible idea. On the front of the barrel is the iron sight, which is threaded and has the appearance of adjustment capability to it. Moving further down, we come to the wooden section of the two-piece stock, which incorporates the rear sights, which are adjustable for elevation, but have no winded adjustment to them. This has all the feel of more of a replica requirement than a fully functional open sight shooting air gun. This is further established by the inclusion of that 11mm dovetail rail to the very rear. There's also a single shot tray can be found in this area as well which can be removed and the magazine can be inserted instead. The version I have here is the 177 calibre which has a 12 round magazine. There is a 2.2 calibre version available which has a slightly lower capacity of 10 rounds in the magazine. Behind this is the bolt which is pretty standard and not the same sort of bolt action setup as on the Lee Enfield SMLE replica for example. But as I said earlier there are naturally going to be some compromises to get this into a PCP format. Underneath all of this is that long slim wooden stock which is really quite nicely done. Naturally this isn't going to be some super glossy laminate finish type Manelli stock material but that would completely ruin the look. If anything this needs to be distressed a little to bring out more authenticity in my opinion anyway. The butt stop is metal perfect for caving in the heads of the allies. This also has a strap point in the stock to match up with the front loop. The trigger is a familiar item if you've used any Diana rifles in the past with the manual safety to lock the trigger incorporated just above the blade. The trigger is also adjustable incidentally. On the underside in front of the trigger and the metal trigger guard is the manometer or air gauge which whilst quite compact they have made the really nice touch of labelling it up as Mauser. This quite clearly shows the maximum fill pressure of 200 bar which from the nicely hidden 100cc air tube should be good for around 30 to 40 shots depending upon calibre and power levels. In this sub-12 177 version I was averaging around three full magazines. To fill this with air simply connect your supplied filler probe to your preferred filling method and then insert into the hole underneath the front of the gun which is hidden as part of the strap holder which is again a nice neat idea. So overall I really like what they've done with this and how they've also managed to create not just a wall hanger but a fully functional and usable PCP rifle. Now let's just look at the power level shall we. You see this is capable in full caffeine mode of hitting up to 26 foot pounds in 22 caliber or 20 foot pounds still in 177 which sets it well apart from the usual BB replicas. Now of course for the UK market that is restricted to the 12 foot pound maximum mark so time to put this over the chronograph to see what it does. 
and using 8.44 grain pellets, this saw a very respectable 784 feet per second, which equates to 11.48 foot pounds. Blimey, the rabbits better get their tin hats out or start digging some trenches. Time to test the accuracy of that long barrel then. Now, rather than mess about using open sights, I thought I would add a scope and test it properly. So, here goes usual 40 meters and it's nearly 12 foot pound firing power and of course it's firing pellets Not bad at all for a replica type base gun and it's great fun to use giving a real sense and feel of history in your hands but with a modern twist because of the PCP element. I was out doing the usual testing and when I was zeroing this in I was comfortably taking out flies on the target zone with it. Oh, Not bad at all from what should be a compromise of a rifle. OK, I was using a target scope, the amazing Sentinel X, but the gun was consistent. Oh, and I especially like the lock open after last shot. Another nice touch. Now, normally these types of air guns usually only appeal to the collectors and historians, but this one does have a dual role of being very useful too. You would probably shock a few guys down the local range if you turned up with this. Cost-wise, well, this retails out at about £420 UK, which isn't necessarily cheap, but I don't think it's massively overpriced either. In fact, with all this real wood and usability, along with that accuracy, I don't really think it's that badly priced at all. As always, I've enjoyed this one, and in more than one way, it really is great to shoot. It has a different feel to normal guns. Yes, I've enjoyed it, which is the usual DJ style link too. Hopefully you have too. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share, hit the alarm bell, and take a look at all this lot. Merch is available as always, just to keep Mrs. AAR busy, and of course, thanks as always to the guys at Vector Air for getting hold of this for me to try. Finally, of course, thanks to you guys for watching. Stay safe and shoot safe, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.